So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Mindfulness at Lunch by Brown Center. My name is Angie Chu, and I'm delighted to be with you today to lead this session and also to launch the series of Mindfulness at Lunch sessions during the weekdays in the month of May. As we've all um, experienced uh, more changes in our life, uh, those of us in Singapore are going back into phase two, meaning that there are now uh, restrictions in place where we're also expected to work from home at least half the time. So these changes are also uh, causing us to have to readjust and our mind is not very good at readjusting on such a regular basis, but it is possible. And that takes for us to make a mindful effort in staying in the present. So I'm delighted that so many of you have joined uh, this session. And it's actually my off day as I was uh, teaching a full day retreat yesterday for my mindfulness based cognitive therapy course. So that's why I'm not in my usual purple. And, uh, but nevertheless, I'm very delighted to be hosting this uh, inaugural session today. And in case you're wondering if someone bashed me up or if I hit my head, no, I didn't. This is my natural birthmark. And I usually don't bother to put on the left side so that I don't have eyeshadow bothering my eyes. So um, if you have any questions, please feel free to post it in the Q&A uh, section of your webinar page. So before we start with a short practice, and I would like to suggest that we do a self-compassion practice, as all of us need a little bit of that as we're all going through uh, adaptations and also sometimes challenges that we didn't expect in life to arrive at our door. So before we even close our eyes, I would like to suggest or invite you to let's just tune into the body. And uh, let's focus first on our shoulders. How are they doing? So just kind of give it a shrug. Tune into our body. Okay, so let's just do a deep breath and bring the shoulders all the way up to the ears. Just hold them there and gently release them and breathe out. And now again, take a deep breath, focusing on your shoulders and lift them up to the ears. And gently breathe out and let go of the shoulders. Good. Just one more time. Deep breath, lift the shoulders up. Hold them there. And now very gently release them and breathe out. Great. Now we're gonna rotate the shoulders. Take a deep breath, pull the shoulders back and roll them forward. And let's do this a couple more times. Right, now let's do it in the reverse direction. Pull them forward and then rotate them back. Take a deep breath when you bring the shoulders up. Yeah. Good. And now let's focus on our neck because a lot of times when we're feeling stressed, our neck and shoulders become really tight. So let's turn our face to the right. And very gently turn to the left. And to the right. And left. And now come back to the center, drop your chin to the chest. Feel the stretch in the back of your neck. Now gently rotate. Oh, are you hearing some crackling sounds? That means your neck is stiff. Change direction after two rotations. Good. 
Good. What did you discover about your neck? Okay, and now we're just going to place our hands together, not to pray, but we're going to push this palms up to the ceiling and stretch out and straighten up the spine. Oh, can you feel the deep compression going on in the spine? Can you feel the spine smiling at you and say, wow, thank you for releasing the pressure. And slowly bring the hands back down. Good. And now we're going to gently close our eyes and tune into the body first. And as your environment could have quite a lot of sounds, whether they're air conditioning or a fan or someone talking, moving around, doors closing, opening, dogs barking, whatever they may be, is to take notice of these sounds so that the mind adjusts to their presence and no longer get affected by them. So then we're going to tune into our mind and get to know a little bit of what the mind is preoccupied with. Uh, especially if you've just come out of a meeting or you've just had a telephone conversation or uh, something that just happened or you're planning a meeting later on, these thoughts are bound to be circling in your mind and that's very normal. So it's just to be aware of what they are before we start a self-compassion practice, focusing on making ourselves feel better because when we feel better, we are able to be kinder and more gentle with other people around us. When we are all stressed up and uptight, then we are likely to be cut and even uh, be irritable and jump on people um, and start to <laughs> umbrage someone. <laughs> okay. So that's what happens when, when we're uptight, we end up saying something uh, possibly offensive or later on very regretful about it. So staying calm and relaxed have huge amount of benefits. Okay, so I'd like to invite all of you to close your eyes and just take three beautiful deep breaths. And just sense into this body first, dropping into the body and noticing any sensations that could be present, including heat or cool on the skin. Any throbbing, pulsation. tingling sensations, or even aches and pain, just to be aware of them. You're accepting all these sensations as part of your body in this present moment. Now just tuning to all the sounds around you, acknowledging whatever sounds that may be present. Befriend each of these sounds, welcoming them as part of your environment. Now tuning into your mind and just noticing, being aware of all the different thoughts that are present. The mind doesn't stop throwing thoughts up just because you have decided you're going to pause. So just accepting this mind is doing a lot of thinking. And notice how 
You may not be thinking, but the mind continues to think. Now I'm going to invite you to use this phrase as a self-compassionate practice. May I be well and happy. May I be safe. May I be at ease. So we're going to use these three sentences and repeat at any pace that you choose. May I be well and happy. May I be safe. May I be at ease. If any of these phrases is difficult for you, you can just choose one or two of the sentences instead and just use the one that resonates most with you. May I be well and happy. May I be safe. May I be at ease. May I be well and happy. May I be safe. May I be at ease. May I be well and happy. May I be safe. May I be at ease. Just repeat that in your mind. May I be well and happy. May I be safe. May I be at ease. May I be well and happy. May I be safe. May I be at ease. Notice your breath as your rate of breathing changed. And even your heart rate. So you can always pause and just notice how your body's feeling now. And start using the phrase again. May I be well and happy. May I be safe. May I be at ease.
Now just shift to focus on your beautiful breath and feeling a sense of gratitude that we're alive due to the kind presence of the breath. And feeling grateful that our brain is functioning well, all our other organs, and our body as healthy as it can be. Now focusing on three more breaths and slowly opening your eyes. So how do you feel now? Do you notice any changes to your mind, to your body? I'd love to hear from you. So you can either post it on the chat or if you're on Facebook to post it in your comments. Thank you very much. Feeling grounded and relaxed, excellent. Feeling relaxed, aware of tiredness and sleepiness, good. Feeling more grounded. Feeling tired, okay. So noticing your body's tired is a prerequisite for you to take better care of your body. Because so much of our activity is involving the mind, we're living in our head so much that we forgot that, hey, we have this body that we need to also look after. So tuning the body helps us to have that awareness. Oh, thank you for the comment. Feeling more at ease than at 12 o'clock. Great. Feeling calm, recharged, wonderful. So this is only a short practice. And, uh, you know, it's the by no means, this is everything about mindfulness. This is only a snippet, a session that is based on concepts as well as foundational attitudes that we are to develop. And one of the foundational attitudes is acceptance. Now, a lot of times people think that when we accept something, it means that we give up, we are resigned to the situation. Not at all. Acceptance is actually a form of a sense of liberation because when we are able to accept what is going on that's beyond our control and it's not the right time or we're not able right now to make a change to what's happening, acceptance gives us that freedom to focus on something else that we can do instead of our mind getting obsessed with something that we can't do, a situation that we can't change. So give you an example. This morning, I uh, received three pieces of news. Uh, one is that my aunt in Ipoh suffered a minor stroke. And then I found out her son suffered a stroke as well two weeks ago, and no one informed her prior, prior to that. And then my other cousin, we're all in a chat group. Then I spoke to my other cousin who also uh, had a, a mother that um, her mother suffered from a stroke. So I had news of three relatives suffering, having suffered from a stroke. And uh, I could see how that shook my mind and uh, caused uh, my mind to be unstable. It was like, you know, the mind was moving all over the place, uh, feeling worried about them and uh, ruminating on what has happened to them. And now um, my one of my auntie has just gone for brain surgery to relieve the um, fluid buildup in the brain. So acceptance was so powerful for me that, okay, you know, there is nothing I can do 
about their situation and to refocus my mind on the present, I'll, you know, make breakfast for my children, um, focus on giving this particular session and uh, focusing on what is it that I can actually do to support my cousins. Because when the mind is shaken, we're actually of not much um, use, you know, we're not going to be very helpful if we're going to be all stressed up. And I learned that my auntie in Ipo was uh, stressed and that stressed over the other two stroke um, that happened. That's why she herself suffered from a minor stroke. So feeling stress actually causes our body to be reactive, to tense up and cause our blood pressure to go up uh, it will also um, cause our sugar level to be affected and uh, our heart rate goes up. So all these physiological changes are not helpful and therefore acceptance and coming back into the present moment is what enables us to continue functioning well uh, and not be distracted by really just thoughts. Because these strokes have happened, but because I only found out this morning that my mind was moved by the information, not so much by what happened. So I hope this uh, little talk helps you to understand the power of acceptance. So it's not a sense of giving up or being resigned, but a sense of uh, being able to refocus the mind to be present. Okay, well, thank you for the comments and hello, Wan Lee. Nice to also know that you're back here into the, into the session, joining us here again. So I was uh, looking at the Q&A, so I'm going to uh, answer some of those questions. How to manage a feeling of not being accepted when it seems everyone is against you? Okay, so this is the mind that is exaggerating. So you have maybe 100 people in your life, uh, but because you feel that or, or you have knowledge of two or three people not accepting you and your mind gets obsessed with that. And then this mind exaggerates and say, oh, everyone's against you, but it's not true. So write down on the piece of paper, who are the people who are deemed against you? And then write down a list of people who are not against you. And you will find that the people who are not against you far exceed the ones who are, okay? And if these people are against you, okay, accept the fact that they're against you. Focus on working with the people who aren't against you. Thank you for this question. Okay, move on to the next question. I'm more aware if I'm triggering someone's amygdala or prefrontal cortex, the deliberate choice to be framed by may I be kind and gentle in my thoughts and words have been helpful. Oh, that's wonderful, Chingy. Uh, yesterday, I was teaching the MBCT one day retreat and this was one of the um, practices that I introduced to the group. So it's wonderful that it's working. All right, uh, one more question here. What is your view on some religious practice of using psychedelics to get a spiritual experience? <laughs> okay, uh, I'm personally not into uh, any form of drugs uh, or any even medication if I can help it. So certainly I would not be one who would uh, engage in taking psychedelic drugs to uh, get a spiritual experience. In any case, uh, the practice of mindfulness is for the purpose of uh, bringing happiness into our life to be present uh, in order for us to uh, be of, of value and to add happiness to people's lives. So it's not about having a ecstatic experience. Uh, so it's a very different motivation. All right, thank you, Millie, for that. Thank you to your explanation of what acceptance means. I was having this question in my mind. Wonderful, maybe I read your mind. <laughs> How do you deal with unrequired love? Uh, I'm guessing that's the word. That means you're offering love and it's not welcome. Well, love is a feeling, caring is the action. So uh, offer care to people who welcome your care. 
uh, a love is a feeling that you can still have people whether they want it or not. So for example, I feel, um, um, you know, like I feel love towards all of you. That's why I'm doing this, right? It's, I don't uh, get extra pay for this or, you know, or you guys don't even <laughs> need to pay anything for this. So, you know, I can still feel love for the world. I can still feel love for the people. Uh, if there is action involved is giving care and give care to people who are welcoming it. Yeah. How do you accept yourself and your quirks? Oh, I have a lot of quirks. <laughs> And, uh, and I have my good points. I also have uh, some shortcomings. Like everybody, we're all human. And to accept that, you know, being human is uh, being the way we are. And our quirks probably are learned from people around us and for people who have influenced us. And uh, yeah, it's like a feature uh, on a wall. A wall that's perfect. There's no feature. So uh, a beautiful wall is one that has a lot of, uh, of um, flaws on them, right? Or marks on them or, or design on them. So there you go. We're part of nature. Great. So I'm delighted that, you know, this has been a successful first session that you guys have all tuned in and I hope you continue to tune in for the rest of the week. And um, there is going to be session every day and I will be appearing at least two of the sessions and also we have recently launched the Asia Pacific Mindfulness Conference workshops and it's 50% off so if you go to the Facebook page or website and uh, register on Eventbrite please take advantage of that because uh, there's just going to be so many amazing global mindfulness leaders that can be leading those workshops so take advantage of them it's 50% discount yeah the webinars are free, but uh, the interactive sessions like what you see that you're doing with me uh, by various uh, experts from around the world, uh, that just helps us to raise some funds to cover the cost of everything else. Okay, a couple more questions here. His son refuses to talk to his parents. He's having problems, but refuses to talk. Well, he's probably uh, in a flight mode. Uh, it's also part of being passive aggressive. So I would say let him be, give him the space, let him come around when his anger subsides. Is there a difference on the various techniques of breathing for meditation, breathing from the nose and out of the mouth? Uh, that is in yoga, that's not in meditation. So in mindfulness practice, we let the breathing be done by the body, naturally. We are only observing the breath. We do not interfere with the breathing. Okay, and the last question here is, where can I get mindfulness training and the future to be a certified practitioner? Uh, well, first is to take the courses and then you can um, uh, look at the possibility of doing it with Oxford University, Brown University, they both have mindful centers. And we are also gonna be offering uh, mindfulness training uh, part one in July. I think it's July, but, uh, uh, or maybe September, maybe you might wanna check the schedule. Uh, there is going to be uh, Kevin Fong, who is going to be giving a talk on, uh, on, on this. So that is a talk coming up later this month. Yeah, I'm sorry, I can't remember exactly when. Um, but what is really important in becoming a mindfulness trainer is to uh, work on our own issues first and to have embodiment of the foundational attitudes. So acceptance is only one of them. Uh, it's really important that we walk the talk and we are authentic in whatever we are doing and teaching. So with that, thank you everyone for joining me today. And we're coming to the end of the session and I hope that you will all be well and happy, be safe and at ease. So you can always replay this uh, on Facebook, uh, on YouTube as well as we'll be posting them there. So with that, have a lovely day ahead. You can use this phrase anytime you're feeling stressed. May I be well and happy. May I be safe. May I be at ease. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.